YouTube is it going the Godows is back with what to watch for the Seattle Seahawks in 2024. I think it'd be a very sneaky team, uh, but storylines, questions, players to watch, biggest games to watch, and we'll have some fans takes as well. This video will come for all 32 NFL teams. We just did the Niners so far. Comment on what team I should do next. Most comments will decide, but Seattle Seahawks, like I said, I think this might be the sneakiest team in the NFL. I think people are sleeping on them a little bit. I think people realize they're decent. I think they're more than just decent. But a lot of changes for the better, in my opinion, uh, could make them very good, very sneaky, and get back on track to the playoffs. So, uh, But three of the biggest things that I'm watching for, you should watch for this year. Number three, less rotating of the receivers, more snaps for the top receivers. And look at that last year. They draft Jackson Smith and Jigba, and it's like, all right, big-time pick. How's that going to work exactly, though? Because Shane Waldron's offense, it's a lot of you know two receivers out there at once. Use the tight ends a lot, two tight ends out there. And JSN started a little slow because there's just not enough snaps to go around. And then he played phenomenal down the stretch when he finally got more and more consistent snaps. I thought Lockett's snaps took a little bit of a hit uh, because of that. It's just not enough to go around. And, and, and they increase the snaps every, you know, for having several receivers out there at once, but just not enough to go around. And now they had Ryan Grubb, who was the offense coordinator for the Washington Huskies, one of the better college offenses, one of the better college teams this past year. And will it be the exact same offense? Probably not. College NFL, a little different, but a lot of similarities. And he uses the receivers at the same, you know, on the field at the same time a lot more. Looking at Roma Dunze, Jalen McMillan, Jalen Polk, uh, what those guys did the last two years, and they're always on the field together it feels like doing different things and uh, they take advantage of that in that passing attack uh, we're going to talk about more more about Ryan Grubb and what that what that offense could look like what it can mean for them but expect more consistent snaps for the top receivers it's not like oh you got to get a decrease in snaps because this guy's getting more snaps like we're going to see DK Lockett JSN out there together a lot and then Jake Bobo looked pretty good in his and he in his short amount of snaps like he was getting like 20 percent snaps give or take uh throughout last year so I mean it's an increase for him as a rotational guy as well uh, in the rest of that group too. So I think that's huge for today's NFL where it's more and more passing and the receivers are taking over and you have such good receivers. It's just such a waste to not get, get them as many snaps as you can. So that's fantastic in my opinion for Seattle. Number two, I'm going to talk about Mike McDonald's defense for a second. The defensive linemen, were, were they a line and the rota how the rotation works? But I mainly look, yeah, kind of they go together, like how they align and how they – how they rotate, not really, I mean, the, the depth, I guess, in a way is what I'm talking about, but mainly how starters rotate with their alignment with, with you know, with each other. Uh, they have, they have some guys up there and Mike McDonald is a fantastic, not only just a fantastic defensive coach, but I, I think he gets the, he gets the most out of that, you know, a lot of positions, linebackers say everything, but look at what a guy like Justin Matabuke did with the Ravens and how he broke out last year. Uh, you know, so he's going to get the most out of these guys. They draft Byron Murphy, who was my number one defensive player in the draft. Uh, you know, they 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 signed Draymond Jones last year as a big time defensive lineman. They have Leonard. They got Leonard Williams back. Obviously, to me, Leonard Williams, and that's kind of Leonard Williams and Draymond Jones and Byron Murphy are, are re, the reason this is number two on this list. But main, mainly Draymond and, and Leonard Williams because I think they're pretty similar players. To me, they're both versatile. You can move them around a little bit, but I always viewed them as like three, four ends, could play three technique, and yeah, of course, they could play D-tackle over the guard, and they, they possibly could play off the edge. We've seen Leonard Williams do that a bit more. Draymond Jones, we haven't seen any of that, but there's some talk about that possibly happening, obviously, um, so that makes it interesting. So how will they start? And Byron Murphy did play a little bit of nose tackle at Texas, but um, he's not that in the NFL. He's a D-tackle uh, he's going to play over the guard. He can play three technique as well. So they're going to start all. They have to start all three of those guys that I'm talking about. They're just too good. How are they going to line them together? How are they going to switch off, rotate? It's going to be interesting. So that's kind of a question. But it's also, I think it's pr it, it's pretty good. It could be bad. Like what if a guy doesn't like, again, Leonard Williams I think is probably better 
three technique, you know, over the tackle rather than edge. Draymond Jones, I think same thing, a little better on the inside. So somebody's going to be lining up a little more outside. So are they not going to be playing as good as they can play because of it? So it could kind of backfire. But I don't mainly view this as a positive thing. Like the different looks you could throw at offensive lines and just teams. And like they're going to be watching film with like, this guy's here, that guy's there. What does this mean? Like, they keep switching off. It's hard to kind of get a grasp of, especially early in the season, on what the hell they're doing. So, a lot of, a lot of talent, a lot of firepower up front in the interior. Uh, and then they do have some guys that can play off the edge, but I'm mainly looking at the interior. It's going to be a lot of fun. And then number one, there's a lot to talk about when it comes to number one, but this new Ryan Grubb offense, I really think will elevate the passing game, but it's more than just that. It's how much different it is. You know, it's not the Shane Waldron. I didn't I don't have a problem with Shane Waldron at all. I know maybe some Seattle fans are glad that he's gone, whatever. But that's not my point. I think it's just a lot different. And it's really going to throw opposing teams off. It's not the same old Seattle Seahawks. It's a totally different look. You know, Gino's been talking about it. It's like it's he's watching Washington film, Washington Huskies film. He's he's saying it's totally different, a lot to learn. Um, he's confident. It seems like you know he's not saying it that way, where it's like it's too much. He's not saying that. It's just I think it's in a good way. Like it's a lot different. And we talked about number three, the receivers, and how there's gonna be more of passing tech, more receivers on the field, maybe more spread look. I mean, that was like an air raid offense. It's an air raid offense that Ryan Grubb ran. Uh, in Washington. Now, is it going to be exactly the same at all times? No, but there's going to be some similarities, of course. It's his offense. Uh, So it's there's not too much of this in the NFL, and maybe it backfires, but I, I think this is kind of where the NFL is heading, really, and it's really going to throw off those old-school defense coordinators. It's going to be really tough to game plan for. You have to account for all the spread, like all those receivers spreading out the field vertically, horizontally, uh, but they have a running game. They have a running game. Look at Washington. They like is when you think of Washington, it's like Penix and those three receivers, air it deep, air it deep. But Dylan Johnson, um, who was good, not the fastest running back, ran for a lot of yards at the same time. And the Seahawks have Kenneth Kenneth Walker uh, and Zach Charbonnet. Like that's a pretty good group over there. And. So they got a good balance going at the same time. Like you mainly got to fear that that passing game, and but you got to worry about so many different things. And it's just like this new look coming to the NFL. Um, I think it's going to be really tough to game plan for, especially right away. Maybe teams figure it out. Uh, also, I think Geno plays a part in this uh, this take here at number one. Geno took a step down last year. I, people talk like he was awful. He was not even close to awful. Like he was decent. Like the year before, he was really good. Uh, but I. I He's got an arm. He can sit, he can throw the ball a ton of times a game, you know, 40 times a game if he has to. Uh, I think it, this offense will fit him, and I think he'll play much better and get it more out of him. But Sam Howell, they brought Sam Howell in for a reason. Um, you know, he was a fantastic college quarterback. He's a guy that can air it out a ton, you know, a bunch of times a game. Um, so they view him as a fit. So I think if he has to come in and play, like if Geno's not working out, I'm not pushing the panic button. I think Howell can come in and be pretty productive. He's got to be better against pass rush uh, you got to be better getting the ball out but I mean you have a collection of receivers and it's a lot different than the commanders uh, the commanders have receivers but it's a lot different than the commanders offense that they ran last year where it's going to be a little more spread out a little more separation it's going to be easier for a guy like that to see the field because his big is- issue is getting the ball out taking sacks his scramble tactics are pretty bad but I think it becomes a lot simpler when it comes to this style of offense so there's a lot going into that number one. It means a lot. So it's a big reason why I think it's a very sneaky team. There's just so many it's new look Seahawks, both sides of the ball, so many different looks they can give teams. It's just something new, something fresh for the NFL. Let's go on to the uh, the three players to watch, in my opinion. I, just the most intriguing players. I'm going to go Rayshon Jenkins, the safety now for the Seattle Seahawks. Obviously, they signed in the offseason. He came from Jacksonville. Um, I, I think he's a little better than people give him credit for. He's not the greatest safety in the world, but um, the the Jags ran a lot of, you know, they had him manning up in the box a lot, manning up with tight ends, and they ran a lot of cover zero. They'd blitz him a bit, um, and I, I thought that was more, and that kind of backfired down the stretch for the Jags defense when it was getting worse. And I thought it was more coaching decisions rather than the players, uh, but Jenkins kind of fits that role. I thought two years ago he was phenomenal. He, he really stood out covering in man coverage from the, from the box 
um, a lot of times tight ends, and he's a guy that yeah again can be a playmaker anywhere. You know, you put him in a box, you can kind of you could put him in the back end if you have to. I'm not imagining a ton of snaps there, but so this is a guy for Mike McDonald. It's a guy for Mike McDonald, and you think about you think about Mike McDonald's defense last year, who really broke out, who was maybe the biggest key piece to that defense on like the different variety of roles that he played, the big, the plays that he made all over the field, Kyle Hamilton and Rayshon Jenkins is not Kyle Hamilton. Let's get that out there first, but this is a, this is his Kyle. This is like the same style player. It's a guy that could pretty much play anywhere in the defensive backfield, but he is really good at being around the box and covering from, you know, box slot area, manning up tight ends. If you, if you need him to, you can blitz him and he can be a factor there. We saw Hamilton do that. So this is the poor man's Kyle Hamilton for Mike McDonald's defense, and he's going to get the most out of him. So this is kind of a sneaky playmaker that is actually more of an important piece to watch for the Seattle Seahawks. Number two, we're going to go Draymond Jones. We touched on it a little bit in the beginning of this video, uh, but yeah, how are they going to use him? That's a big thing. I heard he can actually slide outside a little bit more, but they're going to use him in different spots. But mainly, then they signed him last year. This was a massive, massive free agency signing. Like, he was big time for the Broncos that last year or the last few years. Uh, I thought it was a big time signing. He's a really good player, and he was underwhelming last year. But now you bring in Mike McDonald, who's a, one of the best offensive coaches right now. He gets the most out of his players. You know, young coach, really good at elevating his defense alignment. So, this is big. Like if Draymond Jones still is a little underwhelming this year, then it's like, you know, that one might be a miss. You know, it might be a miss, but I think the talent, I know the talent is in there. I'm very curious how they're going to use him. He could be a definite, he definitely could be a threat uh, for uh, opposing teams here. Uh, then number one, uh, we touched on it as well. I got to go Jackson Smith and Jigba, the second year wide receiver from Ohio State. Big time draft pick last year started off a little underwhelming, but really, really got going. He was fantastic down the stretch. You know, full season like that's a little a little scary for for opposing teams, but he's going to keep getting better and better. It's a guy that can play the slot or outside. He really can dominate the slot. He gets he gets open. He gets separation. He's got great hands. Makes some spectacular catches. Really good after the catch. We're going to see more and more of that stand out. Uh, like the like the ending of last year, but even more than that. But again, we kind of touched on it. You bring in Ryan Grubb, offense coordinator. It's a, it's a whole different look. You're going to use. There's going to be more passing. You're going to use more receivers. Or you don't have to sit on the sideline and rotate as much. There's still going to be some rotation. But just more reps for all these guys. And, and um, I think in this type of offense, I mean, you look at Ryan Grubb's Washington offense. Roma Dunze is kind of like your DK Metcalf. Um, to me, Tyra Lockett is a – they're different. But in terms of the role, Jalen Polk. And then JSN could be the Jalen McMillan. I remember two years ago, Jalen McMillan was actually their best receiver because the guy was just always separating when he's playing from the slot, you know, underneath, downfield. And to me, that's going to be JSN. And, and it's the easiest to target a guy like that. Odunze was the best last year, his contested catch ability. You know, DK will continue to be DK. Uh, but I think the easiest to target, the easiest target is the guy that is, you know, playing everywhere and separating quick, early and often. And to me, that is JSN. So the easiest option for Geno Smith in this new offense that he is just starting to learn. So uh, JSN is going to be super, super productive, more productive than you think. It's going to be a lot of fun. So can't wait for that. Um, and then we got the games to watch. These are my three favorite games for the Seattle Seahawks uh, for sure. And you got two early ones, and that is uh, that's on purpose that they're early ones here. They're two big games, two really good teams. But this is a team, like I keep saying, could be sneaky. They especially could could be sneaky very early because they're going to be a tough tough game plan because there's really no. It, how do you watch film on this with these coaches with these players? Doesn't exist. You know, Mike McDonald doing his own thing now. Um, you know, he mixes things up so much too. It's tough. Then you get a college coordinator running that offense and. It's really going to look like a college, you know, air raid attack at times, and it's a, how do we game plan for this? So the Dolphins and the Lions, I think most people or all people would view as better a better team than the Seahawks. I'd say the Seahawks are a little closer than maybe you think, but 
These are great opportunities for the Seahawks to sneak away with big time wins uh, because the game plan will probably be in their factor. Uh, you know, the the preparing for the games and going, you know, breaking down film and knowing what to expect could be in their favor. Um, you know, and, and the Dolphins had Anthony Weaver as a defensive coordinator who coached with Mike McDonald on that defense. So actually some similarities there, like how do we go against each other? We kind of know we, a little bit about each other there. So I thought that was a bonus. Uh, the Dolphins, especially early in the season, are a high power passing attack. They're so fast. And the Seahawks will be like that as well. So that's going to be a fun, fun matchup in week three in Seattle. Two away games, actually two NFC North teams, but week four, right after the Dolphins. Again, I think they can be a little sneaky. Mike McDonald did a great job against the Lions last year uh, when he faced them. Um, you know, they have that D line to kind of battle that Lions physicality, that run game that kind of opens everything up. Uh, so that that they maybe they match up pretty decent, but it's in Detroit. Lions are a very good team. It should be a lot of fun. And then let's go to very late in the season, week 17 against the Bears. Uh, Shane Waldron is the offense coordinator for the Bears, so that's you know a little bit of a, a revenge game. And maybe some you know, they're familiar with each other, but that's really not the reason. It's a bonus. It's but not really the reasons that it's here. I think a lot of people are saying the Bears are that sneaky team of this year. I can definitely see it. Uh, they people will probably rank the Bears and the Seahawks around the same range. Um, I'd say the Seahawks are a little bit better, but um, they're right around the same range. People think kind of the same of these teams. They could be a little sneaky. I, I agree. Uh, they, they both are kind of sneaky um, playoff teams, perhaps. So they're playing each other week 17 in, you know, in Chicago. Pretty cold it's going to be. That could decide a lot of things there. That could decide a lot of things in week 17. So those are ones I'm looking forward to. And we get some fans' takes here. And um, more people probably commented. Uh, but the graphics were already made, so I apologize if you're a little late on that. But uh, I try to throw, I try to narrow this down. But a lot of people were uh, follow us on Twitter if you want to get involved. Twitter subscribers, I'll automatically, you know, paid subscribers, ex subscribers, whatever, I'll automatically put yours up here. And Anthony Kramer's back with some takes. Um, but I kind of wanted to highlight some here. We're not going to talk about all of them, but um, we well, we had a couple people say, see Sebastian Demarco. And uh, Isaiah, uh, we're both saying, how, how do they split up Kenneth Walker and Zach Charbonnet? They have such a good duo here. Uh, man, it's it's a really good it's a really good question. It's a really good point. Like, is it more of a fifty fifty split because Charbonnet looked really good in his reps last year, and maybe he maybe he's gonna fit this offense a little bit more, and maybe they're kind of preparing for life. With, like, is him as the full time back in the near future? Um, so that's a really good question. I think it's going to be closer to a split. Um, Walker's more definitely more of that home run hitter that, you know, if you want a guy that's going to, he's going to get more reps. He's going to get more reps. I think, I think he's a little closer to 50, 50, but uh, I don't think it changes like our, our thoughts uh, on how good this team is. Like if Kenneth Walker's getting the full load or if they're splitting down straight down the line, if Charbonnet is getting more reps, if it's, while however it's divided up, I don't think it really changes my thoughts on how good the Seahawks offense could be. Um, I think it's going to be different by game, but it's an interesting thought uh, for sure. What what else? And there's some similar takes to what I had here. Um, you know how they rotate the defensive line, so everyone's thinking smart. Everyone's thinking on the same page here. How will Geno be? Um, you know, what, what in this new offense, will he step back up? Uh, Chad, uh, Schreier, uh, how Seattle coverages work with Mike McDonald, Mike McDonald with the Ravens. He mixed it up a ton. That's the, that's the best way to do it. You don't want to get predictable. You want to be, you know, stuck in the same ways. Of course he has different players. Maybe he doesn't think he has the, as good of a secondary, perhaps. I think it's pretty good. But so sometimes the players kind of like what their strengths and weaknesses are, it limits you to what you can actually run. Mike McDonald really wants to mix it up. He doesn't want to be only zone. He doesn't want to be only man. He doesn't want to be you know, specifically only a certain. And there's a lot of cover too last year, but they're really mixing up, which is fantastic. So um, I think that kind of answers that. But we'll kind of, it's kind of, it's a good question. We'll kind of see here. Uh, Seb uh, Sebastiano mentioned uh, cornerback duo. I'm kind of looking at like the cornerback rotation. They drafted a couple Auburn guys. I like DJ James a lot. It's a guy that I think has a lot of upside on the inside. And Witherspoon, uh, people don't talk about it enough. He actually was almost a 50-50 split playing inside and outside. It actually was like 51 or 52% 
inside, believe it or not. So when he's outside, you need a guy in a slot. When he's inside, you need an outside guy. So I am very curious to how they, they're going to figure it out for sure. But how that actually works, who steps up, which young guy steps up, that's another big thing to kind of watch here for Seattle. Um, and then he's talking about who's going to step up at safety and linebacker. You know, mainly linebacker because it's not the same guys. You know, no more Bobby Wagner, no more Brooks. Um, so we'll see steps up there. We talk about Rayshon Jenkins for the safety position. Um, and then uh, Abe, number one Abe Lucas fan, he talked about the D-line rotation as well. Other guys we didn't mention, you know, Jaron Reed's a stud. He can play the nose spot if you need him to. Uh, but the D tackle obviously as well. Um, but he talked about, I think, yeah, he mentioned the offense line. Did, did they fix the offense line? A lot of time offense lines coaching in scheme wise. So we'll see if, and, and we saw the Washington guys do such a great, I mean, that offense line was insane there. So it's going to be exactly the same. No, it's probably not, but they also added some talent too. It looks a lot better. I love the Christian Haynes pick. Um, they add Lake and Tomlinson. That's a, that's a really solid veteran guy, even if he's not as good as he once was a few years ago. So it's a good point um, as well. Uh, and then looking at some other, let's see, uh, a lot a lot of the same. Yeah, see, Anthony Kramer mentioned JSN as well, involvement in the offense. Yeah, I'm really, we talked about, I'm really excited about that. Uh, uh, yeah, do we see same how somebody else had uh, a good a good comment uh, I'm trying to find it. Somebody said, like, did they, did it's in there somewhere. Did they, you know, are they going to regret going for Howell instead of uh, drafting a quarterback? I'm trying to find it. It's really small. Uh, yeah, that's Alex Hernandez. Will we regret passing on a quarterback to draft Sam Howell? So that's kind of a big question. Will Sam Howell play? How will, I think it's going to start with Geno. Like, if Geno struggles, everyone's probably going to go, man, we should probably should draft a quarterback. We got to see Howell first because, like I said, you know, I'm not a huge Howell guy, but this offense is going to be simpler and more to his strengths and weaknesses for compared to the commander's offense. So um, very curious. To see. It's a big storyline here. Um, you know, if um, if he plays, how that works, if Geno steps up. But another one from Anthony Kramer was, yeah, talking about Tariq Woolen because um, he was great his rookie year. He took a big step down last year. Um, but now, yeah, Mike McDonald's defense you know how how does how does that play a part here? Yeah, you can you can argue either side. You can argue either side here because you know, which woolen is the real woolen? You know, last year, the year before, quite the difference. And Mike McDonald is a great defensive coach. They have better talent up front. Uh, going back to Mike McDonald being a good coach, like he gets the most out of players. So that's kind of the positive side. I think really good, smart players though are needed for Mike McDonald's defense for it to work. Cause like I said, he wants to run. Cover two, one play. Man covers the next play. Cover two again. Maybe cover four. Then you know he wants to mix it up. And you in Woolen was coming out was a little bit of a raw prospect. Uh, and 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 he was great right away. So that almost got proven wrong. But in terms of like how many different things he can do, how he can translate, like how, how you know how smart of a player he is. Um, you know, playing against you know weaker competition in, in UTSA. You know, so maybe it uh, maybe it's a little bit of a challenge uh, what what they're asking from him. But I think he's going to be all right. But it is a really good question there that he put. So it's kind of the big things, big storylines to watch. But uh, make sure you comment. And I apologize, people that try to play along on Twitter. If yours didn't make the cut here, it's because the graphics were made before you posted it. But follow us on Twitter. There's a link pinned in the comments for that. If you want to try to play along and get your tweet on here, Twitter subscribers will guaranteed get theirs on here for their team. But comment which team I should do next. Most comments will on this video will decide the next one. We will get to every single NFL team eventually. Love this video. Really enjoy it. But that is going to do it for this one. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.